Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to discuss returns to scale and in particular I'm going to focus especially on understanding our formal definitions here of constant increasing and decreasing returns to scale. I'm also going to give some examples so that you can ground your understanding of these concepts with more applied scenarios. So let's start then. Returns to scale is a property attributed to a firm's production function which relates the inputs to production that the firm uses to the quantity that the firm produces and we're going to call that Q for quantity. So we can be a little more formal here. Let's say that there are only two inputs to production, capital and labour, so that the quantity produced by the firm Q is some function of the level of capital K and the level of labour L. This bit of notation here is what we call functional notation and it just means exactly what I said, that the quantity that the firm produces Q is dependent on, or some function of, that's how we get the F symbol here, the level of capital and the level of labour. So we're just going to use this functional notation going forward and that will be our production function. Great. So asking about returns to scale is essentially to ask if we change the level of all of our inputs to production by some amount, and in our example here, those inputs are just capital and labor, by how much does the quantity produced Q change? So consider, for instance, if we increase both capital and labor by a factor of two, so that our production function is now a function of two times our original level of capital K, and two times our original level of labor L. Let's then imagine that because of that increase, we are able to get two times our original level of output Q. So we've doubled our inputs and we get back exactly double back. This scenario is actually what we call constant returns to scale. When we change our inputs to production by some factor and the amount we produce Q changes by exactly the same factor. This is really easily motivated. Let's consider an example, for instance, if we had a burger restaurant that only produced burgers. We have three current inputs to production. We have ingredients, we have our labor, and we have the shop. And with those inputs, we are able to make 100 burgers. Imagine then that we doubled all of the inputs to production. So now we have two times the amount of stuff that we had before. We have two exactly the same size buildings and the equipment within them, and we have two times the amount of ingredients. Well, imagine then that we could produce, as a result of the doubling of the inputs, 200 burgers. We doubled all of our inputs and we got to double the original output level. That's constant returns to scale, when the output increases by the same amount that we have increased our inputs to production. So going back to our algebraic production function where we doubled our capital and labor and we got double the output back, to get to a more general rule that is similar to what is presented in most textbooks and on the web, we just need two steps. Firstly, as we can see here, our Q here is equal to F of K and L, the function of capital and labor. So we can replace this Q here with our functional notation F of K and L. Secondly, in our example, we use the number two. That's our factor in which we increase our inputs to production. But as I said before, I'm trying to construct a general rule. So I don't want my condition to be stated in terms of any specific number. Returns to scale concerns what happens to output when we change all of our inputs by some positive non-zero number. So let's replace the number two with a symbol that we assign to meaning any positive non-zero number. Let's just say T. For your information, sometimes the factor which I have labeled T is written as A or as X. It doesn't really matter, it's just a stand-in symbol. So I hope you understand this notation here now so that we can construct increasing and decreasing returns to scale easily. Well, increasing returns to scale is when we change all of our inputs by some factor. We can call this factor T again and our output changes by more than that factor so greater than t times our original output. So an example of this might be, for instance, uh, internet or telephone connections. So let's consider if a firm's output is the number of connections made within some network. Let's say for telephones. 
though I am very aware that the use of landline telephones is on the decline, so this might be a dated example. Nevertheless, just consider that I connect two houses together and then the residents can talk to each other. That's one connection, that's my Q, it's equal to one. If I doubled my inputs to production, let's say those inputs are just the wire used to connect the houses and the labor used to put up the wire, then I can connect one more house, say house three. But note now that I have the original connection between houses one and two, but I also have two more connections between houses two and three and also between houses one and three. The connection between one and three is mediated by the connection between one and two. So I doubled the inputs to production, but I got greater than double the output back. I got three connections. This is increasing returns to scale. Okay, so lastly, let's think about decreasing returns to scale. Decreasing returns to scale occurs when we change all of the inputs to production by some factor, and let's call it T again, but the output increases by less than that factor. For my example here, let's just imagine that I had a small hospital that serviced an amount of patients per year. If we doubled all of the inputs to production, say we got a large hospital, we had double the amount of space, double the amount of equipment, double the amount of doctors, nurses, etc. The question is, could we service double the amount of patients? Well, the idea goes at some point within some organizations, especially complex ones such as hospitals or perhaps universities, sometimes they get so big that we might need more middle management or administrators just to help organize the complexity. Due to the size of the organization, the thought proceeds, the running of the hospital has become very complex. So if we doubled all of the inputs from the small hospital to get a big hospital, we would be able to see more patients, but perhaps we wouldn't be able to see double the amount of patients, at least without hiring some additional staff, which of course is not part of the returns to scale thought experiment. Okay, so that's it. I hope you guys liked the video. Please like and subscribe. Give me a comment below. Check out my other videos. Uh, whatever you do, I hope you guys are having a good day or a night.